Hi, here we are at day number 243. I welcome you, and today we read First Chronicles 11 and 12, the first half of Proverbs 18, and First Thessalonians 2. In yesterday's reading, we heard of the people who returned after the exile. Then, starting with the genealogy of King Saul, we jump to the story of how he died along with his sons, and this prepares us for the stories about King David. First Chronicles 11 Then all Israel gathered before David at Hebron and told him, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even when Saul was king, you were the one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord your God told you, You will be the shepherd of my people Israel. You will be the leader of my people Israel. So there at Hebron, David made a covenant before the Lord with all the elders of Israel, and they anointed him king of Israel, just as the Lord had promised through Samuel. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, or Jebus, as it used to be called, where the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land, were living. The people of Jebus taunted David, saying, "'You'll never get in here!' But David captured the fortress of Zion, which is now called the city of David. David had said to his troops, Whoever is first to attack the Jebusites will become the commander of my armies. And Joab, the son of David's sister Zeruiah, was the first to attack, so he became the commander of David's armies. David made the fortress his home, and that is why it is called the city of David. He extended the city from the supporting terraces to the surrounding area, while Joab built the rest of Jerusalem. And David became more and more powerful, because the Lord of heaven's armies was with him. These are the leaders of David's mighty warriors. Together with all Israel, they decided to make David their king, just as the Lord had promised concerning Israel. Here is the record of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashobeam, the Hakmonite, who was leader of the three, the mightiest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar, son of Dodai, a descendant of Ahoa. He was with David in the battle against the Philistines at Pasdamim. The battle took place in a field full of barley, and the Israelite army fled. But Eleazar and David held their ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines, so the Lord saved them by giving them a great victory. Once when David was at the rock near the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group of David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love to have some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. God forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was the leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzael. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed only with a club, he killed an Egyptian warrior who was seven and a half feet tall, and whose spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. 
Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like these made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three, and David made him captain of his bodyguard. David's mighty warriors included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo, from Bethlehem, Shammah, from Harod, Helez from Pelon, Ira, son of Ikesh, from Tekoa, Abiezer, from Anathoth, Sibekai, from Husha, Zalmon, from Ahoa, Maharai, from Natofa, Heled, son of Baana, from Natofa, Ethai, son of Ribai, from Gibeah, in the land of Benjamin, Benaiah, from Pirathon, Hurai from near Nahale Gaash, Abi Albon from Araba, Asmaveth from Bahurim, Eliaba from Shaalbon, the sons of Jashan from Gizon, Jonathan son of Shagae from Harar, Ahiam son of Sharar from Harar, Eliphal son of Ur, Hefer from Mekera, Ahijah from Pelon, Hezro from Carmel, Paare son of Ezbai, Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar son of Hagri, Zelek from Ammon, Naharai from Beeroth, Joab's armor-bearer, Ira from Jatir, Gareb from Jatir, Uria the Hittite, Zabad son of Ahlai, Adina son of Shiza, the Reubenite leader who had thirty men with him, Hanan son of Maaka, Josaphat from Mithna, Uziah from Ashtaroth, Shama and Jael, the sons of Hotham from Aroror, Jadiael son of Shimri, Joha his brother from Tiz, Eliel from Mahava, Jeribai and Joshaviah, the sons of El Naam, Ithma from Moab, Eliel and Obed, Jaasiel from Zoba. First Chronicles 12 The following men joined David at Ziklag while he was hiding from Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who fought beside David in battle. All of them were expert archers, and they could shoot arrows or sling stones with their left hand as well as their right. They were all relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. Their leader was Ahiezer, son of Shema'ah from Gibeah. His brother, Joash, was second in command. These were the other warriors. Jeziel and Pelet, sons of Azmabeth. Beraka, Jehu from Anathoth. Ishmaiah from Gibeon, a famous warrior and leader among the thirty. Jeremiah. Jehaziel, Johanan, and Jozebad from Gedera, Eluzai, Jerimoth, Bealia, Shemaria, and Shephatia from Haruf, Elkanah, Ishia, Azarel, Joezer, and Jasobeam, who were Korahites, Joela, and Zebadia, sons of Jeroham from Gedor. Some brave and experienced warriors from the tribe of Gad also defected to David while he was at the stronghold in the wilderness. They were expert with both shield and spear, as fierce as lions and as swift as deer on the mountains. Ezer was their leader, Obadiah was second, Eliab was third, Mishmana was fourth, Jeremiah was fifth, Atai was sixth, Eliel was seventh, Johanan was eighth, Elzabad was ninth, Jeremiah was tenth, Makbanai was eleventh. These warriors from Gad were army commanders. The weakest among them could take on a hundred regular troops, and the strongest could take on a thousand. These were the men who crossed the Jordan River during its seasonal flooding at the beginning of the year and drove out all the people living in the lowlands on both the east and west banks. Others from Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. David went out to meet them and said, if you have come in peace to help me, we are friends. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies when I am innocent, 
Then may the God of our ancestors see it and punish you. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, the leader of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David, we are on your side, son of Jesse. Peace and prosperity be with you, and success to all who help you, for your God is the one who helps you. So David let them join him, and he made them officers over his troops. Some men from Manasseh defected from the Israelite army and joined David when he set out with the Philistines to fight against Saul. But as it turned out, the Philistine rulers refused to let David and his men go with them. After much discussion, they sent them back, for they said, It will cost us our heads if David switches loyalties to Saul and turns against us. Here is a list of the men from Manasseh who defected to David as he was returning to Ziklag. Adna, Jozabad, Jediael, Mikael, Jozabad, Elihu, and Zelethai. Each commanded 1,000 troops from the tribe of Manasseh. They helped David chase down bands of raiders, for they were all brave and able warriors who became commanders in his army. Day after day, more men joined David until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of armed warriors who joined David at Hebron. They were all eager to see David become king instead of Saul, just as the Lord had promised. From the tribe of Judah there were 6,800 warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Simeon there were 7,100 brave warriors. From the tribe of Levi there were 4,600 warriors. This included Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, who had... 3,700 under his command. This also included Zadok, a brave young warrior, with 22 members of his family who were all officers. From the tribe of Benjamin, Saul's relatives, there were 3,000 warriors. Most of the men from Benjamin had remained loyal to Saul until this time. From the tribe of Ephraim, there were 20,800 brave warriors, each highly respected in his own clan. From the half-tribe of Manasseh, west of the Jordan, 18,000 men were designated by name to help David become king. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. From the tribe of Zebulun, there were 50,000 skilled warriors. They were fully armed and prepared for battle and completely loyal to David. From the tribe of Naphtali, there were 1,000 officers and 37,000 warriors armed with shields and spears. From the tribe of Dan, there were 28,600 warriors all prepared for battle. And from the tribe of Asher, there were 40,000 trained warriors all prepared for battle. From the east side of the Jordan River, where the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh lived, there were 120,000 troops armed with every kind of weapon. All these men came in battle array to Hebron with the single purpose of making David the king over all Israel. In fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be their king. They feasted and drank with David for three days, for preparations had been made by their relatives for their arrival, and people from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. Vast supplies of flour, fig cakes, clusters of raisins, wine, olive oil, cattle, sheep, and goats were brought to the celebration. There was great joy throughout the land of Israel. Our highlighted verse today is, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. The first half of Proverbs 18 Unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. Doing wrong leads to disgrace, and scandalous behavior brings contempt. 
Wise words are like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. It is not right to acquit the guilty or deny justice to the innocent. Fools' words get them into constant quarrels. They are asking for a beating. The mouths of fools are their ruin. They trap themselves with their lips. Rumors are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. A lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. The rich think of their wealth as a strong defense. They imagine it to be a high wall of safety. Haughtiness goes before destruction. Humility precedes honor. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians ended with Paul saying what other people were saying about the Thessalonians. Quote, You are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. 1 Thessalonians 2 you yourselves know, dear brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not a failure. You know how badly we had been treated at Philippi, just before we came to you, and how much we suffered there. Yet our God gave us the courage to declare his good news to you boldly, in spite of great opposition. So you can see we were not preaching with any deceit or impure motives or trickery. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Never once did we try to win you with flattery, as you well know. And God is our witness that we were not pretending to be your friends just to get your money. As for human praise, we have never sought it from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we certainly had the right to make some demands on you. But instead, we were like children among you, or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives, too. Don't you remember, dear brothers and sisters, how hard we worked among you? Night and day we toiled to earn a living so that we would not be a burden to any of you as we preached God's good news to you. You yourselves are our witnesses and so is God, that we were devout and honest and faultless toward all of you believers. And you know that we treated each of you as a father treats his own children. We pleaded with you, encouraged you, and urged you to live your lives in a way that God would consider worthy, for he called you to share in his kingdom and glory. Therefore, we never stop thanking God that when you received his message from us, you didn't think of our words as mere human ideas. You accepted what we said as the very word of God, which, of course, it is. And this word continues to work in you who believe. And then, dear brothers and sisters, you suffered persecution from your own countrymen. In this way, you imitated the believers in God's churches in Judea who, because of their belief in Christ Jesus, suffered from their own people, the Jews. For some of the Jews killed the prophets and some even killed the Lord Jesus. Now they have persecuted us too 
They fail to please God and work against all humanity as they try to keep us from preaching the good news of salvation to the Gentiles. By doing this, they continue to pile up their sins, but the anger of God has caught up with them at last. Dear brothers and sisters, After we were separated from you for a little while, though our hearts never left you, we tried very hard to come back because of our intense longing to see you again. We wanted very much to come to you. I, Paul, tried again and again, but Satan prevented us. After all, what gives us hope and joy? And what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus when he returns? It is you. Yes, you are our pride and joy. Let's pray together. O Lord, you indeed are our strong fortress, and we can run to you and be safe. Father, as a missionary myself, I would like to be like Paul and his companions. Paul described them as being like children among the Thessalonians, in that they were not demanding upon those to whom they were ministering. I want to be like that. And Lord Paul characterized them as being like a mother, even though they were men, They were like a mother caring for her children. And also, he said they were like a father, that is, giving advice and discipling their children. O Lord, help each of us to be that kind of nurturing, loving, caring, discipling kind of person to those around us. Father, we pray that you would help us to be faithful and honest as we share your word with the people around us. Father, we pray that those around us to whom we share your word would recognize our love for them. And we pray that Christ Jesus would be revealed through us. Use us to be instruments of conveying your word for Christ's sake.